Hey, physics students, uh, nice to see you today. Um, I'm going to uh, give you a little uh, how-to tutorial type um, thing here with this uh, fan cart lab. So um, before we start uh, talking about it, let's just check out what's going on in this um, video here. So I'm going to go ahead and play. All right, so what's up there? Uh, what's up here? If you read the description in the um, in the pivot interactivity uh, or interactive, this is a little fan, a turbine on top, which is pushing air out this way and um, applying a force to this little cart here. I have one of these air tracks. Uh, someday when you come back, I'll drag it out of the closet. They're pretty cool. Um, the noise that you hear is the little compressor that's pushing air. If you've ever, ever played air hockey, this is like a linear air hockey table. Doesn't make for a very good game if you're actually trying to play air hockey because everything is all one dimensional. But um, it allows the air coming out here, allows this little cart to kind of float on top of the track and gets pretty close to uh, frictionless, which is nice. Um, every physics teacher's dream. The, um, let's see, what else do I need to tell you? So at the beginning of the video, Once the fan's on, right here, you can see this, there's a spring right here. And this is a top view of that. And that spring is getting stretched. Why is it being stretched? Well, it's being, uh, there's this little band, this little ribbon that's holding the cart to the spring. So whatever force the fan is um, applying to the cart, the spring is resisting that. And it's not moving. So that means that those forces must be balanced. And um, springs are um, handy uh, physics devices. This right here is a, um, a spring scale. I don't know if you can see, if you can see on there. Oh yeah, I think you can see that all right. It's actually, it's calibrated to measure in Newtons. And if you pull on the spring, that's zero and one Newton two newtons and so on. The more you pull the spring, the more force it resists with. Um, we will study springs in more detail and maybe, maybe this chapter, maybe chapter six, um, more about springs. But for now, we're just going to take it um, as a given that since these spring scale type things exist, well, we can calibrate a spring and um, see how much force it exerts. And here we actually have that little calibrated scale. So basically it's, it makes it very much like this little spring scale that I have here where you can, uh, let me go back in the video to before the spring got stretched. Okay, so here's the spring before it's stretched. And um, after, if I let the video go, so that's zero newtons right there. I'm going to let it play. Sorry about the phone in the background there. And I'm going to pause and I'm going to look at that. And that looks like it's stretching. I would say that's um, 1.5 newtons, right? Okay, so that's how you use that little spring scale there. Just make sure that you line up the zero with the spring, uh, the end of the spring when it is not stretched yet. Um, your goal is to eventually populate a data table that looks like this here. You would like to have, for each of the fan settings that you can adjust in the video, you'd like to have force. So I think this was 1.5 for me. And then you'd like to know what the acceleration is. Uh, for each one of those forces. And you also need to make sure uh, that you record the mass of the glider because you can adjust that in the video here. 
um, and you just need to stick with the same one. Um, so you can pick whichever one you want. Uh, you can't pick the 800 gram one because that's the one that I'm using right here. Oh, and this was Fan Force 3, not 1. So um, let me go back to my googly doc here and move this to Fan Force uh, 3. So that was about 1.5 newtons. And now uh, my goal is to figure out um, how much acceleration is that going to cause. Um, so uh, let's see, how would we do that? You already know how to do that. What you need to do there is um, after the cart starts accelerating, after this disembodied arm cuts right there. So that looks like the first frame there. So um, now I need to get my meter stick in there. I'm going to line that up right with the front cart. That looks good. And then I'm going to record here at time, we'll call that time zero, position zero. And Let's see, um, then I'm going to get my timer up here, we'll zero that out, and do a couple frames at a time. How about one, two, three? Uh, is it moving enough? No, I think I would do more than that. Let's see, let's do every, about every tenth of a second. So at time point one, it looks like I'm at position Looks like one centimeter, doesn't it? Um, so at time point one, I'm going to do position. Uh, I would like the position to be in meters, I think. So I think I'm going to call that point zero one. I have to use my SI units. And then this is point two and point three. And let's see if uh, Excel can figure out what I want to do there. Nope. Um, it manually 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and so on. I'm just going to, I'll just go up that far. I just need to show you how to do this. And if you're feeling pretty good about it right now, I think you know where we're going with this, then you can jump off and take over. Uh, so I'm going to go up to there, and that looks like it's at about maybe one, two, three and a half. So, 0 0.035 centimeters. Go to the next tenth of a second. 0.3, it looks like I'm at, that's pretty nearly eight centimeters. And one more for you. You don't have to use these same time increments that I'm using, just a possibility. It looks like it's right at 15 centimeters. Okay. And then you remember how to do this, get the velocity data. The velocity right here would be the slope using these two points. So that's going to be equal to uh, the position here minus the position here divided by and this is going to be uh, 0.2 all the time it's always going to be 0.2 so you could put in that this cell minus this cell but it's always going to be the same because uh, we're always going to be doing those adjacent cells so divided by 0.2 and that's going to give me that there and be able to stretch that down like that and that gives me some velocity data. Um, and then uh, eventually I can go into Logger Pro. I think I, can, I also know that the velocity at time zero it started from rest. So I can put that in there for free. Um, so I can go in to uh, Logger Pro and put in my time.
thousand seconds. And uh, you can do the generate values thing. Did you know that? Generate values when to start at zero and at one and go up by tenths. And then it just auto populates that, which is nice. And here, um, I do my velocities. Short name is V and the units would be meters per second. Um, great, and I've got a couple of them here, so I can just, let's see if I can uh, do that. No, thank you. There we go. i copy those and put them here. That gives me a few little velocity points there if I auto scale that. Um, so that looks, it does look like it's linear, so that's good. And um, if it is linear, of course, the slope of velocity versus time is acceleration. So there's my uh, acceleration, 1.9 meters per second per second. Um, of course, you're going to have more points than that. Now, you need to do that five different times because each one, this exercise right here is to figure out here um what is my acceleration right so mine is about 1.9 i didn't have enough data i'm not super confident about that number but um i think that that's probably not terrible um and then once you have uh, done that for each force of measured the force on the spring and then found the corresponding acceleration by doing what i just did there um then you're going to make a graph um of force versus acceleration. And then you are going to try to figure out what you think um, the general model is. So um, in particular, you're gonna look at your slope and see if that slope has any um, physical significance that, uh, that you can figure out. And I'll tell you for free that uh, in Newton, the unit is equal to a one, a kilogram times meters per second squared. That's what a Newton is equivalent to. And if you understand this, when you write your equation for your force versus acceleration graph, it might help you figure out what the units of the slope must be. Um, I think that that will help. And um, that's your goal. Uh, we're not going to do a lab write-up for this. Instead, you're going to make a Flipgrid. Once you have your Google Doc um, done and you have uh, your graph in that, you should have everything that you need right in the Google Doc. It doesn't have to be the full-blown formal lab report. It doesn't have to look like that. It doesn't have to have a procedure. Um, what we're really interested in is having your um, this data table have you explain how you populated those values and have the graph of force versus acceleration and the equation for that and you explaining what you think it means. So basically, uh, you're gonna talk about how you got this data, show the graph of that, show the equation, talk about the meaning of the slope um, and intercept of zero and um, your conclusion, right? Um, in verbal talking form. That's what we are looking for. Um, you can, if you want to confer with any of your classmates about this, you can do that. If you want to make a group um, that uses the same mass of a cart and see if you get like similar results, that's fine, but everybody needs to make their own uh, flip grid. Okay, that is your assignment. And uh, let me know if you have any questions about that. And uh, thank you very much. Have a great day.